welcome to the three minute Quran study, the place where old coins can give us new insights. In the last episode, we have had a look at the Dome of the Rock, where we have seen that the inscription on the inside walls used the word Muhammad to refer to Jesus as the praised one or the blessed one. But the word already occurs earlier on coins. The oldest coins found bearing the word Muhammad are minted in the style of Persian coins shortly after the fall of the Sasanian Empire. They typically look something like this, with the ruler depicted in the Persian style, four crescent moons around the rim and the word Muhammad written on the outside. The three earliest examples which have been found by archaeologists were minted in Sirjan in 659 AD, in Saranj in 661 AD and in Rai, modern day Tehran in 671 AD. Since the Arabs continued to use Persian archetypes for their coins, it stands to reason that they also used Persian symbolism. For the Sasanian kings, coins were a means of royal propaganda through which they proclaimed their heritage from the gods. But the new Arab rulers could no longer claim to be descendants of the gods, that would have been heretical for them. Their authority therefore had to be justified in another way. The earliest known Arabic coins do follow the same Persian pattern as the ones with the Muhammad motto. They were minted in the year 641 AD and contain the earliest known occurrence of the so-called Basmala, the formula which translates to in the name of the gracious and merciful God. Authority is therefore derived by the rulers acting in the name of God, not from being a descendant of God. But soon other coin variants appear. For example, coins containing the word Abdallah, or servant of God, which was a well-established title for Jesus in Christendom, particularly in the Aramaic-speaking East. Some people claim that the word Abdallah refers to a particular ruler, but whenever a name is put on a coin, it always contains some further identification, usually the name of the father, sometimes also the place of origin. There are, for example, coins with the name Abdallah ibn al-Zubayr, which clearly point to a person. But in cases where we only have the words Abdallah or Muhammad, we must conclude that we are not looking at a person but a title, the servant of God or the blessed one respectively. So let's look at the Muhammad coins again. We know that Muhammad on its own cannot be a name and therefore has to be interpreted as a title. We also know from the Dome of the Rock that Muhammad was used as a title for Jesus only a few years later. It therefore seems likely that we are looking at coins which invoke Jesus as the origin of the ruler's authority. But is there any more evidence than this rather circumstantial reasoning? Yes, there is. With Abd al-Malik, the Muhammad motto also appears further west. From Baizan, we have this copper coin with a fish and the word Muhammad. The fish has, of course, been a symbol for Jesus since the earliest days of Christianity. In 1947, the find of a rectangular copper coin in Palestine caused a lot of confusion. On the front, it depicts a Christian ruler holding a long cross. On the back, there is a large letter M, indicating the denomination, above which we see another cross and below which we have the word Muhammad. Now we can understand the coin without being confused. Muhammad was always a title for Jesus and as such a Christian motto. Muhammad as the prophet of Islam must therefore be an innovation of the 8th century. There was no prophet of that name active in the 7th century. What's more, we can clearly see how the Christian Muhammad motto migrated from east to west, which agrees with Alphonse Mingana's observation of an eastern Aramaic dialect influencing the Quran. But one question remains. Why did the coins in the east keep their Zoroastrian imagery? Well, they didn't. Towards the end of the 7th century, the same Persian-style coins were still minted in the city of Merv. Only they replaced the crescent moons with crosses. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.